program is from NET, the National Educational Television Network. Is it possible to totally bring about a mutation in what is? And to bring, to go into that, to go into this question of bringing about a total revolution in what is, one must have an extraordinary sense of awareness. You know, to be aware what it means. <coughs> to be aware of the trees, of the blue sky through the trees, of those hills beyond. The speaker is Krishnamurti. Of that noise of a motor. He is a man who cannot be placed in a simple category like philosopher or religious leader. He is, however, one of the more challenging and creative men of our time. Born in South India in 1897 and educated in England, he has followed a singular and original path of thought free of factionalism and dogma. This is the first of eight half-hour programs and the first time that Krishnamurti has allowed his talks and private conversations to be filmed. The principal settings are the Oak Grove in Ojai, California and the Thatcher School in the Ojai Valley. Ideas explored in this series range from what Krishnamurti calls the present crisis in consciousness to an examination of war, violence, love, pleasure and pain, the aging of the body, and death. We were saying how very important it is to bring about in the human mind, a radical revolution. <coughs> the crisis, and there are always crises in the world, especially now, it seems to me, is a crisis in consciousness. A crisis that cannot anymore accept the old norms, the old patterns, the ancient traditions, a particular way of life, whether it is the American way or the European way or the Asiatic way. And considering what the world is now, with all the misery, conflict, destructive brutality, aggression, tremendous advancement in technology, and so on. It seems to me, though man has cultivated the external world and has more or less mastered it. Inwardly, he still, as he was, a great deal of animal in him, is still brutal, violent, aggressive, acquisitive, competitive, and he has built a society along these lines. What do you think is happening to the whole American people as a whole? With the automation, with electronic brains, with, you know what I mean? The whole setup. What is happening and where are they going? You, you understand? I think an increasing number of them are beginning to and ask themselves the question uh, as to whether or not there may be alternative forms of human behavior. Uh -huh. Because they and what do they do? Because by then, after, after asking mm -hmm. questions and all the rest of it, they're almost finished. You know? okay. 
they're ready for the grave. And in Europe, the phenomena there is the same as here, more or less. The production is more, perhaps, than in America even. In Germany, in Germany, in Germany of course. Yeah. And Russia is now doing the same. Hmm? So, take all these parts, mm -hmm. put them together, China, Japan, whole of Asia, India included, and then Europe, America, China. Where is it all moving? What we are concerned with is the understanding of the whole process of life, with all its complexity, with its aggressions and miseries, with its sorrows and confusions and agonies. And to understand this vast field of life, which is a constant movement, one must not only hear the words, but also go beyond the words. Because the words, the explanations, are not the facts. But most of us are caught in words. And one must be free of the word, the symbol, the idea, the conclusion. Then one can look, then one can listen. And that act of listening is a really a miracle. Perhaps it's the greatest miracle. When one can listen totally, without any defense, without any barrier. Neither agreeing nor disagreeing. Which doesn't mean the mind is open. On the contrary, the mind is extraordinarily alert then. I hope when one is listening to this talk or to the various other talks that are coming, one hears a lot of words. And hearing many words, is not listening. It's like a noise among the leaves. It soon passes away. When we hear, we either accept or reject, or we translate what we hear according to our knowledge, our background. Or we compare what is being said to what is already known. Or we oppose one idea by another. All these characteristics of hearing denies the act of listening. The act of listening is entirely different. When one listens, there is no comparison, there is no acceptance or rejection. The quality of listening is attention. And when you attend totally, but your whole mind, with your heart, with your nerves, with your eyes and ears, completely, in that state of attention, there is the act of listening. And that act of listening puts away anything that is not true. when you give your whole attention to something. That is, when you are completely listening. You listen to the totality of the thing. When you attend, there is no 
borders of inattention. When you so intensely listen, you are listening to the birds, to the wind, to the breeze among the leaves. You listen to the slightest whisper that's about you. So in the same way, when one listens, that very act of listening brings about a total attention in which you see the totality and the whole significance and structure of what is being said. When you say, I can't, you have blocked, you have blocked yourself. But you can understand more and more of it. Not by blocking yourself. Look, sir, if I say there is no God, hmm? I have blocked myself, haven't I? Or if I say there is God, I have blocked myself. But if I say I really don't know, let's find out. Then I have the energy to go into it. Right? Now, so don't let us say yes or no. Don't let us take sides about it. <laughs> now, how would you see the totality of something, of life. You know, get a grasp of feeling of it, a touch of it, a smell of it. Well, as I said, by trying to take more and more of it and understand more and more of it. Ah, you have no time. I know, that's the problem. So that's the problem, of course. You're saying that's that what you I said. That way. That's what I said at the beginning. Yes, I, like I mean, if I take time, time, you know, I, it'd be impossible. Follow it up, follow it up, step by step. You have approached this problem with the habitual tools. Hmm? And you have eliminated those tools. Not because you are, you are prejudiced against them. Hmm? But you see that they won't answer. Now, when you have eliminated them because they do not answer, your mind is sharper, isn't it? You're on the right track. Of course, you have eliminated them. <laughs> right? right. No. Of what significance is hope and faith to living? What significance is hope and faith to living? I hope you won't think me harsh if I say there is no significance at all. We've had hope, we've had faith, faith in church, faith in politics, faith in leaders, faith in gurus. Because we've wanted to achieve a state of bliss, of happiness and so on. And hope has nourished this faith. And when one observes through history, through our life, all that hope and faith have no meaning at all. Because what is important is what we are. Actually what we are. Not what we think we are. Or what we think we should be. But actually what is. If we know how to look at what is, that, that will bring about a tremendous transformation. 